Well, CBS was exploring the impacts of climate change in the tri-state area and the unique ways that people here are creating solutions. One example is the largest offshore wind farm in the nation being constructed right off the coast of Montauk. Right now, uh, Long Island is uh, powered about 80% by fossil fuels. Yeah, when we go to 2040, it will be 0%. For New York, offshore wind will probably provide 25% of the state's electricity within the next 10 to 15 years. The CBS News' Carolyn Gustoff has been researching this extensively. She joins us now to talk more about it. Carolyn, good to see you. Thanks so much for taking a few moments here. So it looks like New York is ready to become a hub of offshore wind energy. How is the state working to make this happen? That's right. New York has really set a very aggressive goal. They want to produce all electricity in New York State with zero emissions by 2040 and 70% renewable by 2030. So there's a lot of work to do between now and then. And offshore wind, uh, New York legislators, lawmakers have decided, is perfect with our very windy ocean right off the coast of Long Island. So right now, there are five offshore wind farms being in the works, in the planning stages in the next five years, and then another four to five in the planning stages. So that really positions New York to be the leader nationwide for wind farms. Right now, there are just two tiny ones, uh, just five off of the state of Rhode Island, two off of Virginia. So New York is poised to be the hub with really hundreds of turbines to be spinning within the next 10 years. Now, if you're along the beach lines in Long Island, will you be able to see them or are they gonna be so many miles out that it's not gonna be a, uh, an eyesore? You're certainly not gonna see them on the east end. They're 35 miles off of uh, the coast, off of Montauk Point. When they're further west, you will see little, you know, I've seen animations of what it'll look like. You'll see something, tiny turbines, but uh, advocates argue that it's a whole lot better than looking at cargo ships, which are always, you know, in a conga line right off the coast of Long Beach. Exactly. It's not like they're going to be right off uh, 10, 100 yards off the shore. <laughs> All right. So you have to took a, you took a trip to actually to Rhode Island, as you mentioned before, they've got a wind turbine there to just see how the components of this wind farm are being constructed. What was that like? Well, what's interesting to me is that they look so tiny, but up close, everything is huge. The components are huge. So what we got to see were not the actual blades and the towers, but really the brains inside. It's very interesting. They're constructing these multi-story brains that are literally dropped into the turbine, and that kind of operates everything. We also saw the construction of concrete platforms that again, when you look at the turbine, it looks like nothing, but you know, it's a huge concrete platform that allows access. Should there be a problem, a worker has to access the inside of the turbine. And then they're also making these metal rings. I stood next to one, I look tiny, uh, and they're at the base and they prevent like sea life, marine life from adhering to the towers. So it's really very interesting. And we saw so many workers, like women and people from traditional trades that are now pivoting to this green energy. And it's supposed to be, uh, it will lead to 10,000 jobs uh, over the next uh, several years, over the next decade. Carolyn, I'm one of those types that, that still has a hard time wrapping his head around the fact that planes can fly. But can you explain to me how the power from the wind turbines offshore, 35 miles offshore, are going to get to homes on land? Right. Well, you know, you think that the turbines go in first. You know, that's what we all see. But that's actually going to go in last. Uh, what's being built now for the very first wind farm uh, called South Fork off of Montauk is all the cabling. So that's been going on for months and it's 60 miles of cable that is being strung from off of Montauk to Wainscott and it's already made landfall. And what they do is they call it horizontal drilling and they drill under the beach, so they never have to touch the beach. It's 80 feet under the sand. Uh, so it's really a, a fascinating process where they bury this cable at sea, and then they snake it from Montauk to Wainscott, and then they horizontal drill it into the shore and under the sand, so the beach is never touched. And then it comes up through the ground, which we saw, and then they connect it to the power grid. And that's, you know, magic. That's how we get clean energy. That is incredible. It really is fascinating when you think about it, the work and the effort and just the engineering minds that went into the planning of this. Carolyn, thank you very much. Great to see you. Thanks for taking a couple of moments. 
My pleasure. We'll see you soon. Okay, for more in-depth coverage like this, watch our special Climate Change Protecting Our Planet tonight, 530, right here on CBS2 and streaming on CBS News New York. And stay with us. We'll be right back with